Welcome to Perspectives. My guest today is David Thomas. He's the Asheville County Auditor. And uh, the fact this is broadcasting just two days before the election. David, can you talk to us about your levy estimator? Good morning. Thank you so much for, for having me on. And I um, really appreciate Yeah, so the election is almost here and almost gone. And we all should be really happy about that. Yes. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Um, but uh, what is on the ballot this year, something that everyone should be paying attention to, are the different levies and tax issues that are coming before um, folks for, for election. And so, yeah, Bobby said uh, that we have on our uh, website for the Ashby County Auditor's Office website an estimator that will essentially let you see. So there are 31 different tax issues all across the county. Now, I posted up on Facebook and someone said, oh my, I don't even want to vote now. You're saying there's 31 issues on my ballot. And I said, no, 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 sorry for confusing yeah. you. you know, those those are just 31 across the county. So, ironically... Yeah. There I, are I, none in Conneaut, so... Yeah, yeah, and, mm -hmm. and North Kingsville, there are none in North Kingsville. Um, but, you know, Ashtabula... Right, let's uh, get the senior... Yep, there's a good number. Yeah. Because <laughs> there's, there's the, uh, the Ashtabula senior levy, there's the schools... If you live in Saybrook, there is the uh, uh, fire levy um, for Saybrook Township. So there are some of these that have quite a bit, some of these that don't have many at all or, or any. Um, and kind of our role, our office's role, of course, the auditor's office, what do we do? <laughs> we value property and we assign the tax rates that you, the voter, you, the taxpayer, vote on and approve or not approve to your value. And that is uh, your property taxes. So. Um, you know, actually, uh, you know, speaking of early voting and voting, um, you know, today's Sunday, so there are still actually two days of early voting that folks right. can do before November 3rd. So, you know, today, Sunday, November 1st, uh, early voting is available between 1 and 5 p.m. in Jefferson, or you can drop off your absentee ballot at the box there in Jefferson. And then tomorrow, on Monday, November 2nd, it's available from 8 a.m. until 2 p.m. And same thing, you can drop off your absentee ballot the box there. So and, and the voting is at 71 there. North Chestnut. It's not right at the, the yep. Board of Elections office, but right. it's just a little bit down. For those who enjoyed a, a good burger and beer, the old Wild Side mm -hmm. restaurant, that's where, that's where voting is. <laughs> <laughs> well, but, uh, it's it's over by Hofstetter's, the jewelry yes, store. Yeah, right. right. Across from Wall Street Coffee and Hofstetter's, <laughs> that's probably a better way to say it. Um, but, uh, uh, so, yep, so, you know, obviously people know about the candidates that are on the ballot, but the tax issues sometimes are a little bit less known. But some of these we're talking about people already paying, right? So if you calculate right. it, if it loses, that's how much less you'd be paying. Right, right. yep. So so where people can see this, if you go to our website, the Ashton County Auditor's website, you can Google it, or it's um, auditor.ashtabulacounty.us, and uh, you can go up on our website, and there's actually a banner um, right on the homepage of our website that says a levy estimator available, or you can go under real estate, and one of the options is levy calculator. So you go there, and essentially we give you a quick little rundown about all the fun things that are your property taxes. So, you know, uh, how many people know what a mill is? Uh, and, you know, a mill is a $1 per $1,000 of taxable value on your property. And so that's what you vote on is your, your mill. So, um, you know, there are some issues that are half a mill. So that would be 50 cents per $1,000 of taxable value. Other issues in Saybrook, for example, their fire levy is a, is a two mill. So that'd be $2 per $1,000 of taxable value on your property. Um, and we kind of explain what that means, uh, go through that. And there are three different types of levies that can be on anyone's ballot. And that gets to your point, uh, Bob, about renewals right. versus replacements versus or, additional or new ones. right what i understand it's so, just uh gotl ambulance acquisition yes. is the one additional one geneva on the lake yeah okay let's yes. um 
We're a third of the way through on the show almost. So let's get to oh, my, my the I, next. I, I, said, I can just talk, talk, talk. So, <laughs> so essentially, people, you can um, put in your parcel number down below. Okay. And it'll, um, uh, if you don't know your parcel number, which no one does, uh, we have a link there that you can actually find your parcel number, see information. Right. And you can put in your parcel you number. You put your address in and get that, correct? Yep. Yeah. Yep. And it will tell you then uh, what all the different levies are on your ballot and how much, if it's a renewal levy, how much it currently is charging you, and like you said, if it, if it doesn't pass, how much should be decreased, or if it's replacement or an additional, how much would be will be added on. Um, so it's a great tool for people to use uh, and uh, take advantage advantage of, and we really uh, we really encourage people to to stop by there. Or if they have questions, they can always call us too. Um, you know, if they don't quite understand something about their tax bill or uh, their property page, where you would go to actually search for your parcel number. There's an absolute host of information on there. Everything from the actual disbursement of all of your, you know, when you pay your tax bill for two thousand dollars, where does the money actually go? Well, mm-hmm. no one knows. Um, so we actually kind of break it down for you and uh, other information there too. So really encourage people to to look at that, um, and take advantage of that before you vote. Uh, on Tuesday. You can also find out how much your neighbor's house is worth. Yeah, so. oh, I tell you, we, we are the most visited website in the county for that reason, because people are nosy. Yeah. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> I'm all right. You know, seeing how much your neighbor bought their house for, or uh, when it was last updated, or even you know our GIS, our, our map system, you can see all the different information. Uh, and you know, and we have on our website too. We've had good number of education sessions on how to search for the history of your home, how to do uh, uh, different kind of updates on our, our map system. So we're always happy to educate, to explain things to folks because ultimately, you know, we are kind of the information hub of the county, we're the money hub of the county. So it's it's pretty important for people to understand and know. Okay, David Thomas, County Auditor, is our guest. Talk about the reevaluation process. Yes. Is this oh. a three year thing or is this a six year thing? I'm glad we're on the radio and you can't throw a banana at me. This is, <laughs> this is usually where people get upset because, you know, uh, they hear revaluation, they hear, oh, the auditor's office is out there, they're going to raise my taxes. Right. Well, nothing could be farther from the truth. Um, so essentially, what this is. Every six years, the state mandates that an auditor's office goes out and we inspect, we view every single one of the 80,000 parcels that are in Ashtabula County. So you hire somebody to do this or are you like drive around? We kind of part and part. So some of our office does it. We also hire an appraisal firm who specializes in mass appraisal. And so we drive around, we make sure that we have the right information, you know, that if a garage was taken down, we note that. If there's an addition put up, we note that. So we, we go around, we inspect all 80,000 parcels, we look at market sales data and see how's the market going. Now, of course, we all know real estate in our county is booming. It's insane. Mm. Um, and so, you know, we take a look at that and then we, we formulate what we think the market value is of properties as of January 1st of 2020. <clears throat> And mm-hmm. that's what you are taxed on next year in 2021 is your value and your tax rates as of January 1st of 2020. But people, so that, that doesn't necessarily mean their taxes are going to go sky high. Or, so here's yeah. here's a perfect example. So, um, you know, Conneaut schools, when they pass the levy for a million dollars, it may be one mil. So um, uh, people in, in Conneaut will be charged one mil for their property taxes. So if it's $100,000 home, they're charged $35 for that levy. It brings into Conyat schools a million bucks. Mm-hmm. We go around, we reevaluate, we see there's new homes, we see there's new businesses, there's increased value, and so people's values go up. And then maybe that $100,000 home is now worth $150,000. Well, Conyat schools still only can receive in $1 million. Whatever the voters passed for income to the schools, is how much they can take in. They'll reduce so, the uh, millage to compensate. Yep. You're actually taxed less, uh, but the schools receive the same amount. So increase in values doesn't really mean that your taxes will go up. Uh, values are actually the way that we kind of use for proportions. So everyone's values for your property, instead of it being you know, $100,000, $150,000, we can make your value $100,000 and you'd still be taxed the same amount mm-hmm. because it's your personal value in relation and proportion to the entire district. 
Now, if, cool, still ever seen the scene in and out. If when you get your bill, you don't like it, you can call yeah. and, and raise hell, right? I mean, oh, you can. Oh, 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 yeah, <laughs> I expect you to. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so what we've done, uh, uh, people uh, by now, by Sunday, should have received a postcard from my office. And what that postcard says is, hey, we've completed our tentative values. We have got them approved by the state. And um, our, your tentative values for next tax year are up on our website. Come and visit this website, uh, which is on our auditor page. You can, you can visit it from there and see your tentative value for next year. And uh, from now until mid-November, people can actually use that website to challenge your tentative value. You know, let's say um, we move the value to somewhere where a resident says there's no way it's worth that. They can share information with us, you know, leaky roof or bad foundation, something that we may not know. Mm -hmm. So you can actually do that this year or you can wait until early next year. It's called the border revision process. But this is less formal, right? I mean, right. We we try and yeah make things as informal. I mean you know me as informal and casual as as it as it can be um, for this year. But there's a legal process called board of revision. It's more formal. We have to have a hearing, that type of thing. Rent a tuxedo. Evidence. You know, okay. you could. I had cookies. Um, so, <laughs> so it's usually pretty casual. What? Um, and that's the process to formally appeal your value next year after you get your tax bill. Okay, we got a couple of minutes left. Can we go? Sure. Homestead tax application, is that something we do now? So and, you can do that now. And, um, and who is that? So that's for uh, senior citizens. Do they have to have, is there an income thing on that? Yep. Um, so, uh, so there's two good ways to reduce your actual taxes. Well, ironically, the best way is to not vote for levies. I tell mm -hmm. people all the time whose taxes increased. Uh, and their values did the same. I said, well, how do you vote? And they said, well, I passed all the levies. And I said, well, there you go. Um, so you know, if, you're, if you're willing to pay more in taxes and get better services, then that's great. Mm -hmm. um, you have to decide. Oh, yes. Oh, exactly. Yeah, it's it's, it's you know, just like our junior achievement classes that we do, right? Absolutely. Um, so there's the Homestead Tax Credit. And what that is, it's for senior citizens who are 65 and older and make less than roughly $33,000 a year in Ohio adjusted gross income. So Social Security does not count, some pensions do count, that type of thing. And if you, you qualify, you own your home, or you have a mortgage with your home, you can um, receive $25,000 off the taxable value of your home, which is a huge savings for people. Um, and that decreases people's taxes usually by about uh, $400 to $500. Wow. So that's for senior citizens. So is there is the application on your website? Yep, yep. Yeah, so senior citizens or people who are permanently disabled or veterans who are disabled as a result of their military service can actually qualify and apply. It's under real estate and forms. Or um, another big banner that's right on the front of our website is um, the deadlines for Homestead. Share that out uh, into um, people uh, for Facebook and different things, social media. So you can apply online um, or you can give us a call. It's one of the options on our phone tree. You can talk to Chris here in our office. Um, so that's one. And the other one is it's called owner occupancy. And that's um, if you own your home or have a mortgage in your home and live there. Essentially, it's, it's to give a little break to people who are not renters or don't have an investment property but just live in their home. Mm -hmm. And that's about a $50 a year savings typically. Um, so it's smaller, so, but it's still, you know, it's something. And there must be an income, t income, uh, nope. no, that one, that, that one is pure. Just if you own your home and live in it, that's a, um, a benefit that we share. I could uh, do that. You. Yeah. You, you probably actually receive it, um, already. Uh, but some people, you know, don't receive it yet. And they, they didn't quite know that or, um, and where you can actually see if you get some of these benefits or not. Um, is by visiting your property search site uh, on our website. And okay. You can actually see. So actually, Robert, you do not receive the owner occupancy oh. or the homestead. If I are you at? Uh, well, I'm not going to say what you're at. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, you can actually visit our website, search up your name, your address, 
And if this is the mm-hmm. same Robert C. Lebzelter. Yes, it is. Um, yeah, that's me. Yeah, yeah, you're not receiving homestead or the owner occupancy reduction. So you can easily um, see that on our site by visiting your property search. Going All down right, and credits. hopefully every other, everybody else is too. We are out of time. I'm sorry. Oh, I just filled up a whole morning with you. <laughs> but a lot of information. <laughs> Check on Dave's uh, Facebook page too because there's going to be a video I did that explains a whole lot more about uh, the auditor's uh, responsibilities. Thank you for being here. Oh, thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. I'm Bob Lebzelder on Perspectives.